Hello and um, welcome to a warm and sunny day here in Melbourne. Um, just going to take the opportunity today just to go through um, how I make a small panel here. This is um, going to be showing some, some press techniques today. So I've just got a small bench top, so a 10 ton press, nothing, nothing expensive. Um, I have converted this one from the hand pump over to uh, an air over hydraulic. Um, but what we're going to do today, we're going to make this headlight panel. This is for a Mark I Ford Capri, but um, the same technique would apply to um, you know, any number of small brackets, something simple like this, lots of flat flat surfaces. There's nothing too much shape in this. There's a few things in it which we've got to, um, got to cover, but uh, a relatively simple panel to make, but we'll show, I'll show you how I do this um, in my press. This is my shop from home, so um, let's get into it. So this is the... Uh, the panel we're going to make today so it's, it's um, mostly a flat area um, there's outside edges which are obviously turned up and the inside is turned all the way all the way in um, there's two small dimples here which we've got to take care of and there's the shape here I think this is for um, running cables through I'm, I'm not entirely sure um, there's a few holes in this which we've got to get um, make sure they're positioned correctly too. so these four holes and when they go on the uh, on the headlight bucket I've got a bucket here that goes over the top like that. So that has to be alignment. So I think these pins, location pins, have to be correct. I mean, this is um, it's not a tight fit. There's a, there's a little bit of movement here, but we um, need to be fairly accurate with this panel, otherwise obviously it won't work on the car. So let's just go through um, some of the tools we're going to be using today. So most of the stuff we're going to be using today is um, it's all going to be with press tools. So all, all the jigs that I've got here. They've all been um, laser cut out of um, GR350 mild steel. Um, I like to get things cut 10 mil thick and then stack them rather than get them cut 20 mil thick. The uh, reason for that is it just keeps the accuracy through through the depth. If, if you if you laser cut 20 mil, it tends to go go wider through the through the uh, through the jig, and I don't like that. So this is two sheets uh, just welded together. You know, just dress them out, get them nice and nice and neat. Uh, so that's our first piece we're going to be using. And we've got um, just some real basic stuff. It's just made out of scrap. It's just for, this is for, for locating things. Um, other bits and pieces which we'll go through and just some basic tools. There's some hammers here. And um, obviously got the hydraulic press. So the press I'm using here, it's just a, it's a small one. It's a bench top. It's, it's a 10 ton, um, probably made somewhere cheap. Uh, important that you have a working gauge on the press so you can, you can um, control how many uh, how much tonnage you're putting onto your onto your piece. Um, there is a case when you can overstretch something, you don't want something shooting across the room and taking someone's eye out. Um, but you don't need to have a big 50 ton press or something crazy to, to, to make some of these parts. Um, I'll try and keep the camera focused on, on the gauge if I can, but probably won't be using any more than five tons today, but that's all you need. Um, like I say, I have converted this one over to an air over hydraulic. Just makes my life easier if I'm making a big batch of these. You know, if I'm going to make 20 or 30 at a time, uh, it just just saves a bit of strength on the arm. So it's just an airline, and just uh, <coughs> it's nice and easy. Just takes the pressure off the arms and um, makes my life just a little bit easier. So again, um, I like to get my um, parts made up uh, all laser cut. So this has been I drew this up on AutoCAD. Uh, didn't take a huge amount of time. It's a fairly simple drawing to do this one. It's, uh, it took a little bit of trial and error with, with a few bits and pieces. Um, I think this is probably the, the second or third gen, so if you've got a good relationship with your laser cutter, um, you can get them to throw you up a quick sample, then you can run it through your press if you need to make any adjustments. Because sometimes when you press parts through a jig, it can stretch edges and put material where you don't want it, um, or it can turn an edge and you haven't got enough material down there, so you need to make adjustments. So. You know, I don't tend to go ahead and, and um, get 50 or 100 of these cut all at once. I'll do a few samples before I get it right. Um, a good example of that is, the, is these two these two holes here. I'll um, just move the camera and I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So here's our original panel here. And you can see there's it's a small profile here. I don't know if you pick it up on the camera. Um, so also, as that metal comes up, it's going to, this metal's going to want to stretch and these holes, because they're um, reasonably big compared to the size of the profile, they will get actually bigger. So um, this piece here, this hole here, sorry, is uh, what we've got there, 12.7, uh, 12 12 somewhere there. Um, through my trial and error, this one here, before we've obviously pressed it, we've got a little bit less than that, what we've got, 
11.5. So it'll be interesting to see what um, what dimension we get after we've um, pressed this out. But I've done these a few times. And they won't come out within point one because of um, just different presses we're going to be using, and sometimes it might be tighter in the jig, etc. But we'll, we'll get it pretty close. Anyway, right, okay. So I'll show you the first stage, and we'll um, we'll get it into the press. Okay, so I've got my two 10 mil plates here, which I showed before. Um, I've drilled and tapped them with an M10. Um, I could have welded these in, but uh, I've got. This this this, per, this this piece here serves for both um, left and right hand side, so I can take these all threads studs out, fit them in the other side, and it will do the other side of the car. So basically, uh, I've got this um, thing here. So this jig here is just to locate it's just to locate the panel on, on here. So I put that on there like that. We've got too much movement. That's going to cause problems. So to locate that accurately, I've made up this. It looks rough, but it's it's quite a good jig. So it locates in here. Hopefully, there we go. So there's no movement with that. That sits tight. And what that will do is these two um, studs here will, will pick up the uh, pick up the, the end, so that it can't go that way. And there's two pieces of one mil plate which I've just tacked on. That will stop it moving it that way. So that just goes in there like that. It's actually quite a tight fit. And that, now that can't go anywhere now. That's got no movement at all. That's, that's solid. That's perfect. So the next thing we want to do is I've got another. Another set of plates here. Again, this is uh, just two pieces of 10mm welded together. And that just sits on top. Get some washers in there. So I'm trying to do this working around the camera, sorry, so bear with. Okay, so that's in there nice and tight. So now we can remove the uh, Remove the locating jig. That's now done. Don't have any more use for that. Okay, so the, the first stage we're going to do is um, sorry. So here's the original. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn down this edge all the way around. Um, nothing too flash. But the way I do that is um, again another another laser cut piece here. Two more um, pieces of 10 mil mold steel. Just weld it, weld it together. I've rounded off all the edges because we don't, if you have sharp edges, it will cut into the panel. And that basically, we'll, we'll just um, sit on there. Maybe. Well, there we go. So there's clearance there. There's, there should be a panel thickness clearance all the way around this panel to allow that to, to go through the middle. So let's mount that in the press and we'll, um, we'll push him through. Okay, so we're mounted up in the press here now. Um, I've just got a small blob, blob that just uh, helps to centralise the load, sp spreads the weight around a little bit. Now it's a little bit trial and error, sometimes this might kick and it might roll over, so I'll just go very slowly. If it, if it starts to move, I'll we'll reset the press. So it's going more at the back, I'll just take the pressure off, move forward a bit. Simple as that, okay, so um, put it back on the bench and we'll go over to um, the next stage. Alright, so this is the uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn the, uh, the outside edge. So you can see on the original panel here, uh, this outside edge is turned and we've got a small lip all the way around, all the way around the outside and a bit down here. So what we've got here, this jig again, this is, this is now four sheets of, um, of 10 mil. Uh, I've got the top two are welded, the bottom two are loose. It just um, I should have probably welded them, but I haven't got around to that yet. Um, so all we want to do is load up our load up our part, and I'll still lift it in the original jig because that keeps it nice and keeps it located. It should that goes in there like that. Now to spread the load, I'm going to put my in like that somewhere over a bit. All right, I'm it somewhere there. Just trying to get this to centralise is a bit of a problem because we're moving edges all the way around here and it tends to um, just move around a little bit so we'll, we'll see how we go. Okay, that's four tonne on the press, it's just starting to lift the edge, which we can quite see it. I'm just going to move the press, so it moves a bit on, on the other side. And it 
through. <laughs> that wasn't supposed to happen. Uh, normally that goes through a lot slower, sometimes it picks up. Um, of course, the one time I film it, it, um, it catches and does that. But look, it's, um, <clears throat> it's in, it's through. I'll uh, take it out of the jig now and um, we'll see what we've got. Right, next thing I'm going to do is um, go and take this out of the jig. We're going to leave it, leave it located in the central part, but we're just going to take the outer frame out. Again, having this not welded probably does me a bit of a favour because it's, um, it's pretty heavy and uh, awkward to handle. That one's off, that one's off. Sometimes they fall out, <coughs> other times they are like okay. It's out. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that. So we've got our, uh, all our edges are over, all the way around. But what it hasn't done, it hasn't put them in nice and tight. So let's see if I can show you. As you can see that air gap in there, um, that's because the panel has probably come over you know, 80 degrees, 85 degrees, not all the way. So what I tend to do is uh, just get the panel hammer out and we'll just tidy that up a little bit. Okay, so I've just got a um, hammer here with a, uh, a, low, a low crown hammer. Um, so all we're going to do is just going to go around and um, just tighten up all those edges. Okay, that's all those edges nice and tight. <clears throat> now, I originally did design this press to um, form this lip here. Where's the panel? So this one here, this lip actually it goes down and it goes in the opposite direction to the rest of them. So um, I did make a jig to make that happen, but I was never really happy with the results. So I, I just, um, while this is clamped in nice and tight in the jig here, but we'll just turn that down by hand. Uh, it doesn't take a huge amount of time. So we'll just do that now, eh? So on this side, I can see, you can see if it's touching or not. So in any area that you need to uh, tidy up, do that now. Okay, that's somewhere near it. So next thing we're going to do is we are going to take this completely out of the jig, and then um, we move it into the next stage. Again, these, these things are so tight that they too, tend to jam up. Sometimes it's easier just to, just to do that, just to shot one out. Let me go over there. That one's done. That one's out. And that one's out. Okay. All right, so you can see we're, um, we're looking pretty much like a panel now. Um, last of the things we've got to do is we've got to put these dimples in here and we've got to put this profile in. So I've got a completely different jig for doing that. So um, let's set that up and then um, we'll do those holes. Okay, so this is our next stage jig. Um, I've got a, a locator across the back. That'll pick up, I'll pick that up, this edge here, and that'll stop that fold going back. Uh, this edge here is nice and tight, so that'll pick up this inner profile, so that locates in there quite well. Now to make these, um, to make these dimples, They've only actually got to go down by um, four mil between the, the bottom here and the bottom of the part. So um, these plates being ten mil thick, what I've done, I've just got some small packers here. This is one mil, so one mil goes in that one and that one. And then we got some. I think these must be five mil. So that goes in there. That goes in there. So now that will now bottom out four mil, four mil down. So when we put this piece on top. 
Now located. Okay. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to put this guy on top. So I've got cutouts here for where the where those dimples are. That sits on top of that one. And I've got. So if you can see, see these dimples. I've got a very big um, radius. So I made these slugs. They actually should fit in there. So that should create that same profile. So that now sits on top of there. That one goes on top of there. Now this little doohickey we've got here, this is to make this piece here. So this, this whole, these are gonna be pressed down. This one here is gonna be pushed up. So to make that, um, obviously if I pushed in there against a the flat end, it's gonna destroy all this. So we've got, I've made this small profile piece. It's, um, it's nothing pretty, it's all just welded and filed up and um, that will sit in there. And it will sit like that. So it, it creates that this piece, piece, this ramp here, it will create that ramp. So that sits on top of there. And then we clamp the whole thing together. Okay, so these, these two holes will allow us to push those two slugs downwards. And on the other side, I've got a slug here. Again, this is um, profiled to, um, to suit the part. That will just um, that will go in that hole and we'll just push that down. So first of all, we'll put it in the press and we'll do, we'll do these two smaller ones first. All right, back in the press now. I'm literally all I'm gonna use is a, uh, a high tensile 10 mil bolt, nothing flash. That goes in there and we just come down and just, we just give it a small push. It only needs about two or three ton, I think, to make this happen. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep an eye on that bolt. And if I put a small amount of pressure on the press and I'll see when it starts to slow down, that's telling me that it's bottomed out. There, and that's it, stop. That's showing, that's showing three ton, so not a lot. Bring that one out, and this one. A bit awkward. Next thing we need to do is uh, flip this over. Uh, no, we won't, we won't flip it over, sorry. I'll put that guy in there. And this slug has to, this, oh, sorry, trying to hang up. So this slug has to sit in here. And I'll do it up this way just because like, these, these, these bolts get in the way if I try and do it up the right way. So that goes there. If you can see that, let's try and zoom in. You can see we've um, already formed that, but uh, the the corners in here they're uh, they're not quite sharp enough. I don't like that, so we'll um, we'll just sharpen those up by hand. Uh, so just to sharpen these lines up in here, I'm just going to use a uh, a small chisel. We'll just just chase that out a little bit. Try and get my head in by the camera. There we go. There. Beautiful. So what that's done, that's sharpened up those lines into the bottom. Um, hopefully you can see that. Hard to show. Lots of shadows and light on the camera here. Okay, so we'll um, we'll take that out of this jig, and um, we're nearly there. Okay. 
Okay, and getting getting parts out of jig. If, if you need to get any other screwdriver, you, you can end up bending the panel. So just just drop it on the bench, and generally the shock will take it out. Okay, so you can see we've now got those dimples in here. Uh, we've got this um, pressing made up. I'll, me I'll measure that in a minute. But what we have done, we've um, stretching that metal in here, stretching it down, has caused this to ripple up here. So we'll just get on that on the edge of the bench and um, give that a quick tidy up. Okay, that's a bit better. Right, okay, before I forget, I'll measure those holes and I'll show you um, that it's now hopefully somewhere near the uh, original one. So, the original one here, I mean, it was, what have we got? Can't remember. 12.7, was half inch. On our, on our one, we've now got 12.7, look that. Generally, it will be within point 0.1 um, to get that spot on, just, just a, a fluke in front of the camera. Uh, but again, you know, sometimes you just got to, um, you're never going to get this right the first time. You're going to have to do a first generation, a second generation, even a third generation of your, of your CAD drawing just to get these dimensions right so that the end result is what you want. Okay, so we're nearly there now. Um, all we're going to do now is uh, going to go into the other shed and we'll take, up, take off all this ex extra material and we'll polish up some of these... Um, some people care, some people don't. I like to not have all these press marks in them. Um, just a personal thing, I guess. Uh, so we'll shoot off into the other shed and we'll, uh, we'll clean that up. So we're in the, in the other shed here now. Um, I'm sorry if there's not much light, it's a bit darker in here. Uh, so I've got, I've got two um, miniatures set up. I've got one here with a, with a 40 grit um, belt on it. And um, after I've done that, I'll just move to the other, other miniature. I've got a, uh, a Scotch white pad set up just to, to do the polishing. But we'll use the 40 grit to take out the worst of this, um, this shape, which is obviously not quite right. Okay, so hopefully you can see we've straightened that edge up, um, just taking out some of the uh, marks out of the outside. Um, so we'll go over now to the, um, the polishing belt and we'll, um, we'll make that look a bit prettier. So this is another initial. We've just got a, um, I'm not sure what grit this is. Um, it's just a Scotch white pad on, 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 the, on, the, on the machine. Basically it, we've um, pressed our panel, um, this is the original one, this is the one we've just made, and it won't go over the top obviously because the, um, because the lips, but I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Um, my jigs will fit the original panel, so that, that again, is a good cross-reference cross that um, we've got the uh, jig CAD drawings and all the rest of it all, um, all spot on. Um, the only thing I don't do on these is these small, four small holes here. On the uh, on the headlight panel, when that goes in there, it um, oh wait, when that goes in there, that's where it's, it's screwed on. Um, and the only reason I don't put those holes in is if somebody puts this on the car and, and they're two mil here or a degree or whatever, um, it's going to not going to be right. So I'd all get the the custom, put it on the car, and if for whatever reason it's not exactly in the right spot, um, it's not a fault of this panel. It's just you know th things happen. Um, they can then locate the headlight, they can get it, get the angle correct, and they can spot drill those through. That's the only reason I don't do those. Um, but here's the, uh, here's the part. You can see it fit. Beautiful fit. Pins all line up. Um, all the holes are in the middle. You've got movements, move, same clearance as the result on the original one. Um, that's about it. There's um, not really much more to tell. Um, I mean, you wouldn't make up these jigs if you were... I only going to do a one-off. Obviously, I make these and I sell these, so it's worth the investment. Um, 
you know, there's a bit of work in CAD time there, but I, I enjoy it, it's good fun. Um, keeps the brain ticking over and all the rest of it. Uh, but there's nothing too complicated here, so you need obviously a PC to do some CAD work, a hydraulic press and, uh, and a few bucks behind you, and you can, you can produce some, some nice panels. Um, I saw quite a lot of these, and um, if anybody wants one, you can jump on, on my um, Etsy page. I'll put a link down below. Um, please subscribe, we'll do some more um, videos of um, more Capri parts and uh, update the progress in the workshop maybe next week. Uh, see how I go for time. Um, thanks for watching.